Casino Cash in Texas Politics. It's October 8th, 2024, and these are your headlines. A pro-casino political action committee is contributing significantly to two of Texas's top officials, Governor Greg Abbott and Comptroller Glenn Hager, ahead of the upcoming legislative session. According to new campaign finance filings out today, the Texas Sands PAC donated $150,000 to Abbott and $100,000 to Hager during August and September of this year. The PAC also made smaller donations, giving $15,000 to Railroad Commissioner Christy Craddock and $5,000 to Democrat State Representative Tony Rose. These contributions are part of a broader strategy as more donations are expected leading up to the legislative session in January. This most recent report covers activity between July 1st and September 26th. Before the last legislative session in 2023, the Texas Sands PAC spent over $2.3 million, with notable donations including $300,000 to Speaker Dade Phelan, $225,000 to Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, and $200,000 to Governor Greg Abbott. Additionally, the Texas Defense PAC, which is funded by Miriam Adelson, the owner of the Las Vegas Sands Casino Group, made in-kind polling contributions to state representatives Angie Chen Button, Morgan Meyer, and Janie Lopez, as well as House candidates Mark LaHood and John McQueenie. Despite these efforts, the Republican Party of Texas firmly opposes any expansion of gambling, including legalized casino gambling. The party's platform urges Republican legislators to reject campaign contributions from gambling-related PACs and lobbyists. Land Commissioner Don Buckingham has signed the deed, taking ownership of the Alamo Cenotaph. Previously managed by the city of San Antonio, the Cenotaph, which is located just outside of the structure, became the center of controversy when former Land Commissioner George P. Bush unveiled plans to reimagine the Alamo, which included relocating the Cenotaph. And that's a memorial honoring those who defended the Alamo. It also marks the Texas Centennial. Plans to move it prompted outrage from citizens and elected officials alike. And once elected as land commissioner, Don Buckingham made well on her promise to restore and preserve the Alamo instead of reimagining it. She advocated for the Alamo Plan, a $400 million project to construct an Alamo visitor center and museum and preserve the Alamo Plaza, Alamo Church, and, of course, the Cenotaph. Governor Greg Abbott had signed the Alamo Plan into law in June of last year. Alamo plant funds will go towards preserving the limestone foundation and stone walls of the Alamo Church, making the surrounding streets into landscape pedestrian spaces, and constructing the Alamo Visitor Center and Museum. I don't need to tell you that our power grid is in serious trouble. Blackout after blackout. Why does it keep happening? Why does the greatest state in the country continue to be shaken like this? And which foreign government eagerly pushes for the collapse of Texas? In this coming season of Exposed, We'll answer that burning question we're all left with when the power goes out. How could the state with the most wealth and natural resources struggle to keep its power functional and who's behind it? Exposed. Lights out. A new series by Texas Scorecard. Out now wherever you listen to podcasts. On September 28th, ICE enforcement and removal operations in New York City arrested Javier Jose Albernoz Marchand, an illegal alien from Venezuela and member of the Tren de Aragua gang. He was arrested for possible threats made toward the police department. Over the past year, he's been arrested several times for shoplifting and illegal possession of a firearm. Chan had been arrested by U.S. Border Patrol near El Paso in September of 2022, but he was released into the U.S. on parole due to capacity in the detention center and released on the condition that he report for processing elsewhere. Surprise, he never did it. He's currently being held in ICE's New York City office, and his removal proceedings are pending. Last month, Governor Greg Abbott declared the Tren de Aragua gang a foreign terrorist organization and established a joint task force to go after them. The gang is well known for violence, murder, kidnapping, and trafficking. The governor also announced that the Public Safety Office is offering a $5,000 reward for information leading to the arrest of known and suspected members of the Tren de Aragua gang. For more of today's stories, go to texasscorecard.com.